You've got your action, you got a barrel on it, you need to separate the two, you're gonna need an action wrench. Let me show you what I use, what I like about it, and why it might just be the right tool for you. Removing actions is not a difficult process if you have the right tools. Now, I've owned several different action wrenches over the years, and they are usually action specific, meaning generic 700, uh, Defiance needs its own, Bat needs its own, uh, Borden needs its own. So my old Defiance wrench would not have fit in my Borden, vice versa. Like there's just little differences in the lugs, the measurements, the, the, the diameter of the action, uh, the actual bolts, the bolt lug uh, raceway. Like there's just uh, things that are different and to be honest, it's kind of a pain in the butt having to buy an action wrench every time you add a new action to your inventory. In my particular case, uh, I've had my defiances for a long time, but if you take my 22 actions, for instance, I've gone through several of them, including a Rimex, a Voodoo, uh, Bergara, and uh, what was the other one, uh, CZ. And obviously each of those have their own requirements. And then you get into the full-size guns again, most of them kind of have their own requirements and action wrenches aren't cheap. Uh, it's, you know, let's be honest, it's a chunk of steel that's been milled out, uh, but most places are going to be charging somewhere in the $70, $80 range, depending on what it's for. So again, it adds up. And then if you sell an action, you end up selling the action wrenches with it maybe. Uh, so, you know, what, what have I gone to? Well, uh, I have actually moved on to the short action customs modular action wrench and you know as much as anything probably because if you guys know me you know that i like to move gear around and play with a lot of different stuff and action wrenches were just one of those things where i found myself always having to look for different action wrenches and so i picked this up uh gosh i've had this for probably six or eight months now and i got it when i had my defiance actions and uh, I now am using it on my board in and then I use it on my Rimex if I need to. But what makes this different? Well, I'm going to show you right after I wipe this grease off my finger. The way that uh, Short Action Customs does this is they give you a modular head. So you have this shaft and it's a slightly undersized shaft so it will fit in most holes. Uh, whether it's board in or uh, a bat or, you know, defiance or a standard 700, uh, savage Tika, like uh, there's a huge range. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what I do. I'm going to put up a little graphic right here and show you kind of a list of all the heads and all the actions that this fits. And you'll see here, there is a very, very wide range of uh, actions that you can get this to work on. So all you have to do is buy a new head and as an example, I've got, um, like I've got a number, what do I have? A number seven and I have a number one and a couple different bumper heads. So depending on the action you're using and the head you're using, there's a couple different of these little Delrin, uh, kind of bumper blocks that screw on to help make sure that it's spaced out correctly. So you're not damaging inside and, uh, that's it. So I will show you real quick, you know, obviously it's going to fit into my action and this is the one made for my board. And so this is a number six and it fits real tight in the, uh, action itself. And because you are, uh, putting this head on, you're probably thinking, well, maybe it can't handle the torque or whatever it is, but it's a nice, and it's not just square sided, right? Like what they did, because if you had a square sided one, you would, you know, potentially over time strip it out. It would round out. So what they've done is they've put these little uh, recesses in each corner, which really give it a lock mechanism that isn't going to strip or round out. So we're going to go ahead and throw that in and let me just make a little adjustment here. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on here. And then I use a breaker bar just to get the uh, action loose. If you're wondering what I use to hold my barrel in place, you can see here, uh, I've got the Short Action Customs Modular Bench Vise, and that thing is freaking amazing. Um, it, again, it's the same concept. I've battled with different bench vices, and uh, you know, I had one that handled inch and a quarter barrels real good, but, and then I started getting into rim fire, and I had all these different 0.9, 1.1s, you know, 0.75 barrels, 
and it got to be a real pain in the butt. Uh, this modular vise has, has been awesome. In fact, uh, let me show you. So it has different inserts here and you can go all the way down to 0.865 uh, or 0.870 all the way up to 125 straight. So anyway, that's what I use. So I use a breaker bar just to get, uh, just to get the action loose here. Okay. So I've got the action loose. I can now pull out my wrench. I'm going to remove this and what I'm doing today. And it just seemed like a good time to make a video is this is the barrel that I just came back from nationals with, uh, without a doubt, it is a really good shooting barrel. Uh, it's only got about 800 rounds on it and I know exactly what load, uh, this gun likes and I know exactly what to do with it. It's all documented in my book, but I'm in kind of an off season until Southwest nationals in February. I don't want to go burning up this barrel. So I'm going to put it aside. Okay. And I'm going to, you can't see right now, but I'm pulling off the, uh, pulling off the tuner of it. Cause I'm going to be putting that tuner on another barrel. All right. And if I come over here, see if I can give you a little better perspective, you'll be able to see this barrel vise. Okay. So we're just going to, we're going to loosen that up. This swings open. It's got a little, little gate there. And let me put this barrel aside real quick. And we're going to pull out another barrel here. Yeah, here we go. Okay. Sorry, I've got my barrels labeled and I just had to find the right one. So this is a barrel I took off maybe two months ago and it shoots good. It doesn't shoot great. I've got a bunch of fire forming I'm going to be doing. Um, not really a lot of load development. So, you know, I don't mind shooting up this barrel a little bit. So we're going to put that back down. This goes over it. And I know the, um, the indexing on this barrel. So it's point, it's pointed basically straight up. So we're just going to clamp that down. Okay. And then let's come back over here and we're going to give this a little bit of a wipe down. I always like to make sure I clean the shoulder off, especially. And I know there's lots of different ways people do this and controversial this and controversial that I, I can just tell you, this is what I do. And that that's all there is. I put the smallest amount of anti seize, like just a drop. And I've had this for nine years. So that tells you how much I've used it. And then I have my action. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here uh, in terms of wiping it down. I'm just going to clean the face off. And I always stick uh, a towel in here and just clean it out because you never know what's in here. So that looks all good. Yeah. So it's a little extra greasy because I forgot I was swapping barrels and I actually, um, <laughs> I actually greased the lugs already. So, all right. So I've cleaned the face off. I've cleaned the face off the shoulder. We're now going to do this. Some people put uh, oil on the threads. I've, I've seen just about everything. And then if I'm ever in question, I can always take a look and see how much of that anti seize got spread around. If I don't think it's enough. Yeah, that's plenty. Um, if I didn't think it was enough, I could always put another, another drop on. All right. So we're going here. You might be asking, well, how come your scopes off? Uh, that was strictly for you so that you could see everything going on. Honestly, you know, I've, I've changed tons of barrels out with my scope on. You just have to be careful. That's all. But, uh, if you want to be the safest, obviously take your scope off. So we're going to go ahead and throw the action wrench back in again. It fits really tight. 
I'm going to go ahead and get my torque wrench now. And I do 80 foot pounds on mine. It's within the range that Jim recommends. You have to check with your action manufacturer. The action, uh, from what I've always been told, is going to be the weaker link compared to the barrel. So you want to make sure you talk to the action manufacturer and find out what they recommend as a torque range. I know some actions, you know, can be up in the hundred. Uh, others, you know, might be 55, 65, something like that. And some guys just take the wrench and smack the, you know, smack it down and, and give it an extra snug and call it good. I used to do that uh, and I used to think I was fine. And then one day at a match, I, uh, my gun just started shooting really bad and I couldn't figure it out. And I got home and realized that the barrel had come loose. So I clearly had not done a good job of yerking it closed. So I no longer yerk it closed. I actually check the torque. So we've got that set. And there we go. Once is enough. We don't over torque. And then always make sure you undo your torque setting. I've done plenty of videos where people have caught me not undoing that. So I guess I've gotten my hands smacked enough times that I just remember now. And that's it. So this is ready to go back together. I'll throw my stock on, tuner on, scope on, and it's ready to shoot. So that is the short action customs modular action wrench. Uh, you know, I just think that for somebody, especially people like I'm not even that extreme. Like I've only got a few long guns. Uh, I don't own a ton of stuff and that's, you know, probably honestly not the norm. Uh, but if you have any range of guns that need uh, barrels changed on it or any kind of thing that would require an action wrench, uh, to me, this is just a no brainer compared to having a bunch of different action wrenches sitting in your drawer. So I hope this helps. If it's something you're looking for, you might look it up. I will put a link in the description below. And as always, you guys have a good one. We'll talk later.